Okay. So, uh, should we just let's continue from the topic uh, that we uh, had uh, finished yesterday. So, it was the end of the last video and the beginning of the next video. So, let's finish that topic. Then we'll come to the larger issues that you guys have raised about trading strategies and all that approach to trading. Is that okay? We'll continue with the topic that we discussed yesterday. So, yesterday we actually, I'll just give you a quick rundown of what we were discussing. We had gone back to one of the decision problems, which if you see, uh, okay, so you remember that one of the decision problems that we have, uh, one of the decision problems that we encountered or we discussed when, while discussing the, uh, the decision problem that exists in the case of management of an investment fund, okay, one of the decision problems towards the end is how to exit at a profit or where to exit at a profit okay so once you enter the position two things can happen either the position goes against you in which case you should get stopped out okay and you should have a stop in the market and this the other situation that can happen is the position can start going in your favor okay in this case the question arises like suppose you buy dollar swiss here okay we can make this a little bit maybe bigger and uh, do we have two hours let's try two hours Okay, so uh, so so the the thing that can happen is if I buy dollar Swiss here at 99.70, and then it can either go down and then have me stopped out. Let's say if I have my stop at 99, or the other thing that can happen is that it can actually start. My view might be right, and it may actually start going up. Okay, so please remember, although we are discussing dollar Swiss, which is as far as asset classes are concerned, we are currencies, we're in currencies, but all this stuff that we are discussing applies to everything. It applies to all all markets and all other asset classes. Okay, that's why we discussed. That's one of the ways where which uh, the one of the different ways in which finance is taught here, which is we don't just discuss stock markets because there are many general principles of markets which are apl applicable across all asset classes. So we should not discuss it only as a stock market thing because then you might think it doesn't apply to currencies or bonds, right? So everything that we discuss here, although the example is taken from currencies, applies to all asset classes. So the other thing that might happen is the market actually might start moving in my favor and might start going up 101 102 etc and then the question arises at that point of time at what point should i lock in so you are getting profits okay you are showing paper profits everyone's familiar with this term paper profits okay these unrealized profits we discussed that right realized versus unrealized pnl so the unrealized profits are sometimes referred to as paper profits okay or m2m profits okay so m2m typically is referring although there's nothing in that expression necessarily to indicate that it's referring to unrealized but m2m profits always refer to unrealized profits okay it doesn't refer to an, uh, the uh, realized part of the profit so unrealized profits are piling up in your account now the question arises at what point should i book, book my profits okay so lock in my profits at what point so you realize that that's a decision problem right you agree that's a decision problem so we had decided in the other in the previous course when we discussed this we had actually discussed a case where you use trailing stops that is you don't directly solve this problem but you solve it indirectly by tra using a trailing stop you remember that that was discussed in your uh, that was asked in your case also yes yeah okay please not aggressively like some of you like Tanya Shuchi are nodding aggressively but I want to see some other aggressive nodding so that I get a clear picture that you have understood if you're just sitting there blank I, it's very difficult for me to figure out whether you have understood or not okay because if you haven't understood then I'll explain it again okay so you have to give aggressive nodding okay all right so now we had in the previous session in the previous course we had discussed only how to indirectly solve this problem which means what happens is as the market rises okay i may move i may move my stop which was initially at 99 i may move it to one then as when it has gone to 101 when the market is at 101 and so that's the trailing stop method but the other way to solve that problem is to directly solve the problem by using a limit order to uh, limit sell order in this case i'm buying dollar swiss right so in this case i can sell a, i can set a limit sell order to take profit at a particular level it could be 101 it could be 102 etc is this clear that's another way of solving that is the direct way to solve this problem of how to exit at a profit that is a decision problem okay which is how to exit at a profit okay or where to exit at a profit at what price okay 
so that's what we discussed yesterday and for that what we said was that that decision also is not to be taken arbitrarily oh this looks good ah, I have lots of money I have lots of money let's take profit now that's an arbitrary way which is unfortunately many even professional traders work like that okay oh it's look good nice, nice profit let's take it so and uh, typically the human tendency is to take the profits quickly and run the lo losing positions okay which is exactly the opposite of what you should be doing okay so the way to solve it in a very structured manner which is consistent with the rest of the assumptions of your trading system that what that's what we were discussing yesterday okay so you can go back and look at the rest of the video i'm just quickly recapping the system the problem for ourselves yesterday that we set ourselves okay so we looked at this situation where uh, the investor let's say okay in this case our total gross profit that we have realized is 5.625 okay million and the um, invested capital in this account this these are the numbers this is already in your so I've named the sheet trade risk this is already in your notes okay you have access to this file so you can examine it later so in this case the invested capital is um, five million dollars and you have made a profit of 5.625 so you have a realized uh, you have a return on invested capital of this is not RC actually this is a return on invested capital so let me just re rename that this is okay return on invested capital okay i discussed the difference between invested capital and risk capital with you yes okay all right so let's just assume that in this case we are facing a situation where the investor who has given us money is demanding 113 percent return and let's assume that this entire analysis okay if you remember Gulati brought up that point yesterday that whether this is an ex ante analysis or ex post analysis right now we are doing for system trading system risk parameters calculation system edge and all that you can do it both ex ante and ex post okay uh, but uh, right now we are doing it as an ex ante analysis our investor has told us that we need to realize a return of 113 percent on invested capital okay which means that i need to produce a return of 5.625 okay and therefore this this will return translated to 113 percent now that involves a certain system edge okay now what is involved in that so remember just go back and check some of you were not able to uh, recollect what system edge nobody actually could remember what system edge was yesterday okay so please go back and revise these uh, concepts okay so uh, now the system edge into the total number of trades will give you the same profit which is 5.625 million which is what you're gunning for okay you're planning to do 180 trades and you are planning for a system edge of 31.250 how does that come about it comes from a 75 percent loss rate a 25 percent win rate okay and average loss you have set from previous uh, calculations we are taking these as given average losses say 40 42k roughly i'm rounding it off okay so the total system edge of this figure that you have 31.250 is coming out of the 75% uh, losing trades the average loss is 42k and the r3 is 6 so the average win is 250k okay so you remember the system edge uh, formulation we had uh, discussed it yes we had i think maybe rewritten the system edge figure or we went up no so these are not actually rewritten this was not rewritten yesterday but we can um okay we will not go back it'll take us a lot of time okay so you remember that system edge is basically um percentage winners into average uh, win plus percentage losers into average loss where the average loss is written with a minus sign remember that everybody that is just a mathematical expectation of your trading system which we recapped yesterday okay so that's your system edge so uh, so you need this uh, so the system edge of 30 the so basically this is how the logic works you need to produce a 113 roic of 113 percent that means you need to produce total profit of this gross profit total profit minus total losses it needs to be this that means that the system edge needs to be this given that you're planning for 180 trades okay now if the system edge needs to be this and you have already got a 75 percent loss rate budgeted that means 25 percent win rate and you have also got an average loss of uh, 42k that means that to produce given all this to produce the 31.25 system edge your r3 needs to be six 
which means your average win needs to be six times your average loss otherwise you will not have a system edge figure of 31.25k okay or we'll just call it 31k here round it is this clear that's how that six comes okay in that equation of system edge there's average loss into uh, into probability of loss plus average win into probability of win okay and so uh, therefore uh, so so the point is this 31.25 will not come unless you have an average law a win of 250k given that you have an average loss of 42k and a 75 percent loss rate this is clear you have already done this exercise this was the last question of your ipm paper right okay so uh, in the last question we asked you to did, uh, calculate this uh, system edge the r3 the last question was calculation of r3 okay which is a relevant point because these other systems typically in many situations you will have this kind of setup that the average loss is determined by your total risk capital pool okay and the number of trades you're planning to do that will determine the average loss so that is kind of almost given from outside the investor is going to insist that i need this much return that is also going to come from outside so basically you will be faced with this kind of situation where you realize you need an r3 of six which means you need an average profit of 250k okay so in this case now what is the relevance of the r3 that is what we are going to see now what is another relevance of the r3 when we connect it further to our decision problem which we just discussed which is we are now i just bought some i bought some dollar swiss and now the dollar swiss has started to move up 101 102 etc and now i'm wondering where should i take my profit so i'm dealing with a decision problem of uh seven uh, which is basically the numbering is not important okay the decision problem i'm dealing with is the decision problem of at what price level should i or at what profit amount should i exit my position when it is in a prop when it is a profitable position is this clear we are dealing with this so we'll see how the r3 comes into play to help us solve this problem okay all right so what we did was we saw that so what so this is what we saw for that we need uh, so this is the problem that we have now the problem basically this is our problem where should i exit my winning position at what price level okay so to solve that we set up some equations yesterday uh, we'll just uh, this we had actually made a mistake what we did was remember when we took this position into a, we when we um, broke up the bracket and moved one term to the left side we forgot that the profit also should have been moved the pro it was supposed to be divided by the profit so that also should have moved so that's why we were not getting the right answer okay so we'll just i'll just wipe out this part and copy it from here okay let me just copy it from here. So I'll wipe out this entire part here so these are obviously not a very uh, happy way of writing equations but we are just doing it here because i don't know how to use the other software there's actually some good software have you guys heard of this software called libreoffice libreoffice is a free uh, many of you might know people or you myself your, you yourself might be using pirated versions of uh, ms office yes. okay many people do that that is very bad because it's very bad bad means not immoral but just bad uh, strategy because you could get viruses so or when you get a when you get a pirated version and you can't patch it you don't get to patch it through an office update and those unpatched versions the old versions are more vi vulnerable to uh, virus attacks am i right cyber security man okay so um, all right so therefore what you should do is now many people don't understand there are many very good pieces of software which are free software so you can tell everybody about libreoffice which is a free software and it's a full featured replacement of ms office and it's got some other modules also it's got a math module where you can actually write equations and it doesn't have to be written in such an ugly manner look at this so even in ms office we have that module oh you have that okay okay i didn't know that but i didn't know about that okay so um, is this clear okay all right so this is now what we are doing is so understand the context we are trying to solve the decision problem at which is basically at what price do i exit my profitable position okay uh, and we are making use of the r3 concept which is r3 is average win by average loss okay please make sure you are very comfortable with all these concepts okay so um, all right so for that first what we do is we write the profit expression okay remember the profit expression which many of you messed up in your uh, ipm exams because in this case what is happening the what is the terms asset in this particular what is the terms currency in this case swiss franc who said us dollar you said us dollar 
<laughs> Somebody said US dollar. So anyway, so the terms I said remember the rule, the profit in PNL is always happening in the terms currency. PNL always happens in the terms asset. Okay. So uh, remember that rule and then so the terms uh, so therefore when you make some when you are going to compare the uh, and remember that in your system it's a dollar based system this 42k is a US dollar figure so you can't compare a Swiss franc loss to a US dollar figure okay you can't benchmark it so you have to convert the US dollar figure to uh, the Swiss franc figure to a dollar figure so that's why in this case the prop uh, the profit expression needs to be written as obviously the profit is position times here I've written it directly like this if you write it like this you will always get negative signs when there is a loss and positive when there is a profit okay for long position is profit position into ex uh, exit price minus and this is all in your notes you don't need to write down the notes you just focus on what being discussed this is whole thing has been pasted in your notes okay the outline notes so this is just position in, uh, into exit price minus entry price divided by exit price this is the formula for the profit this is this will give you the dollar profit this is the dollar profit on dollar Swiss franc trades okay the dollar profit on dollar Swiss franc trades if you are doing trades where the dollar is the terms currency like Aussie euro okay in that case you will not have to do this last part here this exit price is not required because it's directly giving you a dollar profit or dollar loss if you're trading euros then dollar is the the US dollar is the terms asset right if you're trading Aussie Kiwi in all those cable if you're trading cable that is sterling usd all those cases the us dollar is the terms asset so in those cases you don't need that this last part of the expression exp in that case your profit expression becomes only this because the profit is directly coming in the dollar uh, in, in dollars because usually what happens is that the risk capital numbers and the uh, the maximum loss number etc those are expressed in us dollars okay so but sometimes and then there's the other type of problem that you can get is that if you are trading sterling yen in sterling yen what is the terms currency yen okay so then becomes even more complicated okay because you have to now convert the yen loss and profit into a dollar figure so therefore you have to then insert instead of the exit price you have to insert the dollar yen exchange rate which is prevailing are you following what I'm saying go back and think about it nothing you just have to remember this basic principle two basic principles first is that PNL is always generated in the terms assets second is that typically may not always be the case but typically your risk capital numbers and maximum loss numbers are going to be in US dollars so you can't compare a yen figure to a US dollar figure because you have to make sure that your loss on the trade is equal to the maximum loss and not more okay are you following what I'm saying is everyone following what I'm saying okay okay so these are all the nuances okay that you have to be aware of okay so this I'm not going to go through the working but if you go through the working now now it is correctly formulated what are we trying to solve for here let's be clear about that what are we trying to solve for Sukriti in this problem that we have set up you understand the names here profit is the profit okay profit here is basically what is the profit I'm gunning for because remember this is this equation has been set up for the purpose of helping me to determine at what price should I exit my winning position my money making position at what price should I exit it so that I make the necessary amount of profit required okay under the constraints of my system and what are the constraints of my system investor wants 130 percent okay given all the other parameters of my system the only way I can deliver this is if my average profit is six times my average loss so in dollar terms my average profit has to be 250k so this 250k goes in here okay but what are we solving for in this how should we set up this equation what are we going to we are trying to model we are trying to write a mathematical expression to model the what as a function of what else is my question clear you understand the logic you understand the the uh, the lingo that we are using you need to be able to use the right lingo when you're doing your Gordon growth model when you're doing you remember the Gordon growth model you better remember because otherwise DG sir will catch you okay so uh, Gordon growth model what are you modeling in the Gordon growth model is my question clear yes 
No, you don't understand my question or you don't know the answer? I don't know the answer. You don't know the answer. Anybody knows the answer? Everyone's clear about the question? In the Gordon growth model, what are we modeling? Yes, Kulikit is almost there. Value, fair value of the stock. Okay, so you can say to make it even more clear, you should say fair value, but it's a correct answer. So it's not the price of the stock. It's not the it's the price you can see from the market. You are modeling a fair value. To make it very clear, to make the distinction between price and value very clear, you should use fair value, which means this is according to your subjective assumptions. What should be the fair value or the correct value of the stock? Okay. Is this clear? So that's what you're modeling. So on the LHS, you have the fair value of the stock and the RHS, you have the div the current dividend divided by R minus G. If you have a growth rate, a constant growth rate of dividends or if you have constant dividends, then it's just D by R. Okay. So that's what you have to. So in that sense, I'm asking the question now to Sukriti. Are you following what, what we are saying? So in this case, what are we trying to model? I explained the, the these are the terms. This is the position, this is the profit, this is the exit price, this is the entry price and same exit price. So when we are writing this equation and trying to manipulate the terms, what are we trying to end? What's our goal? What are we trying to model? Because whatever we are trying to model, that will be either on the answer is clear now that, that that will be on the RHS or LHS. That's where we want to get to. Right. Is my question clear? Yes. Am I talking Japanese? <laughs> Are you able to understand what I'm saying? So the question, Sukriti, what is the answer? Is my question clear to you? What is the answer? Yeah, so in that case, in the terms of this equation, then what would that be? What are we trying to model in the, if, if, with reference to the terms here, what are we trying to model? The exit price. Okay, so somebody else, you should have answered. Yeah, you you told me, but you have to answer in terms of what has been written here. Exit price. Okay. Yeah, I understand. Okay. So as long as you are clear about that. Okay. So we are trying to model. So we want to just the object. The objective of all this manipulation is to get the exit price out on one side. Okay. So that we can express the exit price. Are you following? Yes. That earlier Gordon growth model you understood. Yes, sir. Okay. You are trying to model the fair value of the of the share okay so now in this case you're trying to model you're right and you're trying to write a mathematical expression to model the exit price as a function of the other parameters of your system okay so the other parameters are basically the required profit which in this case is 250k because you know you have to make six times your average loss okay this will go in as 250k uh, in terms of so the language is that you're trying to model the optimal exit price okay uh, as a function of the targeted profit, the position size, okay, and the entry price. Yes? Shreya, is this clear? What are the three what are the three exogenous variables in this model? XO XO. Which are which are the three? I've already given you a hint that there are three of them. Exit okay. Price, entry price. Exit price is an exogenous variable. The entry price. Yeah. Then. Position. Okay. Actually, there. Uh, my number of. No, there should be. There are actually four. No. Four. Yes, folks, anybody else wants to input, give us any input, Mehak? Now again, you're sitting next to your buddy, but today, thankfully, you're not talking that much. Okay. Now, Mehak, please help us, help uh, Shreya. Exit price is not an exogenous variable. We are asking you about the exogenous variables. So what is the meaning of exogenous variables? Exogenous has been explained. Please go and look up the videos. <laughs> Please, somebody give him some exogenous input so that he can understand useful. what. Huh? Useful. No, 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 no. Exogenous is not useful. Now, we had this entire discussion. Maybe you are not there in the class. Please go and look up the video. Okay. So, we had a discussion. So, the one minute, guys. Okay. Let's quickly recap. Okay. In this case, the exogenous variable is when, once we see the final solution this is what we are modeling so we took it to either one side left side right side and we are modeling it as a function of there are actually four exogenous variables so when i said three that's not correct 
okay there are four exogenous variables position size okay entry price position and profit okay some of these are all yeah is this clear yeah oh I'm sorry 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 sorry, sorry. it is three only sorry 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 I'm so sorry how did I why did I have the impression that it's four yeah there are actually total of four and one you are modeling so there are three okay sorry I'm sorry about that okay all right so is this clear now please be clear about the link now we have found that there's one person who has received an A in IPM but does not know what an exogenous is okay so this is what happens some of the freak things that happen that Surbhi was pointing out that because in trading the results are unpredictable okay so you may put in a lot of effort at some pre may have put in a lot of effort but because I mean there there's a big element of luck involved so that's what I was telling you that even highly uh, you know even highly very very successful uh, fund managers can end up losing money people who have made money for many years so there's a very famous uh, fund manager called John Paulson who made 16 billion dollars in the year of the um, in the year of the uh, the financial crisis 2008 okay because he was short all those mortgage-backed securities which collapsed in value so he made some obscene amount of money like 16 billion but that guy has been basically struggling ever since so since 2008 he has been continuously struggling to make money and his assets under management is continuously declining okay so I use two terms here one term that we use in the industry is AUM AUM is assets under management okay and the other thing that I used was OPM OPM stands for other people's money okay so many people have so what has happened is in many cases like John Paulson he's still managing OPM but many other successful fund managers like uh, Leon Cooperman uh, and many others actually <laughs> have they are so frustrated by the results that they are getting in the markets they're not able to make money they are returning outside investor money and just managing their own money okay so uh, the point that Surbhi has raised is actually a very vital point which is even the but even the even when you refine your own trading method and you're putting in a lot of effort okay the, you may still lose and it may seem very unfair but that's how life is that's how the markets are okay so uh, but that that's a basic reality of uh, say which is actually everybody is facing that you can't escape from the market look at everybody just, even if you're not involved in financial markets even companies face that problem you see many things like Reliance uh, the, the younger Ambani and his companies are in big trouble because they have not been able to manage the debt load uh, well and their revenue they're not getting enough revenues you can have a lot of debt if you have a substantial revenues then you can still cover everything but somehow he was not able to generate the returns in his businesses so being uh, being an Ambani being having all that money that's not a uh, ticket to success you can see that right so that is a basic uncertainty of life and uh, of the economy and the financial markets which you can never accept so you should be mentally prepared for that that you you may put in a lot of effort you may have a very well designed trading system but eventually it, I mean uh, but still your results will be a disaster and some other guy might just not put much effort and uh, get good results but that will happen only one year if you don't have a good system you can't continuously produce good results okay so so that's the what we were talking about now where did I why did I get into this discussion why did I move into this part of uh, people losing money? What were we discussing? Exogenous variable. Then I said that he doesn't remember what exogenous is. Oh, trading. Okay. He got partly, the part of the reason he got an A is because SG1's group got the highest marks in the trading. Okay. And then I, I do everything as relative grading, right? So their team got 100% on the grading on the trade on the project component. And then I set the lowest bar and arbitrarily I decide what the lowest team gets. So if I decide the lowest team is going to get 30%, then uh, based on the actual score, the raw score difference, that is scaled proportionately. So these guys will get 100% and the lowest team will get 30%. And in between, everybody will get the same distance. It will be proportional to their actual scores. Okay. So I think I've shown you the scoring in lab. Didn't I show you the scoring in lab? So if some somebody scores 80 and then the lowest team scores 20 then the difference between the two is 60 and then if I set the lowest team as 40 percent and then the highest team is 100 percent then there's a 60 percent difference so if your score is let's say 80 then you'll get 80 percent because it's just proportional to your score okay once I've defined the boundaries okay so the for, from the scores it's objective but the problem with a lot of things see I can't police everything yeah so you're taking 
No, I did not take NAV as the score. Remember, I told you the score is. Let's say your uh, your return was the score is basically NAV divided by maximum drawdown. Not NAV, not even NAV. The period return. Period return. That also you should actually know how to calculate. I'm sure you guys won't be able to calculate that if I test it. Okay. Uh, but uh, I'm sure many people may not be able to calculate. We should do that testing. I spared you guys all those calculations. Actually, you should be taught to write the formula for drawdown. Okay, understand drawdown and write the formula. But what I'm doing is I'm sparing you guys. So I took the period return. So you trade it for 30 days or whatever days. Okay. So in that period, you make a period return. Okay. So you started with hundred dollars. If you end up with ten dollars, that means your period return is ten percent. Okay. So if your drawdown is two percent, make sure Garvid come back on time. Yes, sir. Don't go on holiday. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, if your period return is 10% and your maximum drawdown is 5%, then your score is 2. Okay. So, somebody can actually have a lower period return than you and have a higher score than you because their drawdown is less. Their maximum drawdown is less. Are you following the logic? Okay. So, I can see one problem with your trading, with your project trading is many people are not trading actively. The level of activity is quite low. But then you're cheating yourself now. I can't police at every level. You guys are graduate students, so I can't police you guys at every level. Okay. So this project opportunity is given to you. You have access to live data with very high quality feed. Then you have all these option prices with the eyeballs being highlighted. Also, the software is so advanced. Okay. If you don't make use of it, you're actually missing out the opportunity to learn. Okay. Because I can't police at every level. Then I have to start giving people grades for trading more actively which is not really correct because you don't have to trade that's not a good kind of incentive to force people to trade actively okay so these things uh, these problems are there but you have to basically take advantage i can't police at every level okay all right so let's go back to uh, i don't know where i was but <laughs> let's go back to this so we were talking about exogenous variables okay so here there are three exogenous variables and we have modeled the exit price as a function of these other things okay and we can plug in these values of these exogenous variables quite easily because we know that based on other system calculations we have the position size which you can go back and calculate from yesterday yesterday's video you can watch and figure out why this came out to be the position size okay because our entry price was 99.70 our exit price at a loss was 99 figure okay and we had to lose only we could only lose 42k so therefore this position size was determined in such a way that if you do this position size you enter at this price exit at this price then you lose 42k okay that's why this position size comes out so once you put all this in this formula is now correct okay the exit price is now properly being modeled position into entry price divided by position minus profit if you do this calculation here okay you can figure out for yourself how the, you can go through this derivation this is just algebraic manipulation there's nothing nothing to do with finance actually okay once you put it in like this once you put it in this form then the finance stops then you just move into maths and then this is just maths and then you finish it and then you come back here and then you do position into entry price this is position into entry price you see position into entry price okay i'll show you you see that position is this one entry price is this one okay are you guys following if you don't follow please raise your hand and ask me to repeat yeah yeah so on those page we are calculating the exit price so for that we should know the position no 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 no. It, there's no circularity there's no circularity because we are talking about two at remember we are talking actually this is uh, this exit price we should maybe give it a better label this is yeah no no this this exit price one sec let me just redo it so all cases of this exit price let's call it exit price um yeah it is actually exit price at profit okay so uh, let's call it exit price plus okay so all the exit prices here they should be called exit price plus to show that they are talking about the exit price at a profit okay and there is no circularity because the quantum of the position size okay just like you do in your um, equity uh, in your equity price uh, when you're discounting uh, earnings to arrive at the fair value of the stock okay you're discounting earnings by what should you use what cost of equity or whack who said whack 
earnings earnings are to be discounted by cost of equity okay so in that model the cost of equity is one of the what endogenous or exogenous in the equity fair value model where you are deriving the fair value of the stock okay as a function of various things in that model the cost of equity is an exogenous variable or an endogenous variable exogenous because are the endogenous variable here is the fair value of the stock i should have waited for garvin to come back before asking the second exogenous variable question when you are doing when you are discounting earnings future earnings you are discounting projected earnings to arrive at the fair value of the stock okay right you are familiar with that exercise just like nothing no different from dividends instead of discounting dividends you are now discounting earnings okay so when you are discounting earnings then to derive the fair to derive the fair value of the stock there the endogenous variable is the fair value of the common stock right yes people are not nodding aggressively and then the endogenous variable is cost of equity but to derive the cost of equity itself you had to go through another exercise using the capm cost of equity model where the cost of equity was now the endogenous variable yes so the same kind of exercise we have done here because we know that the position size will be an exogenous variable here in this equation in this model but therefore we had to previously decide the position size here the position size was an endogenous variable where position size is written as uh, the in this form where the position size is written in where would be this i deleted that part i deleted that part so we don't have that here but position is written as um, this okay prop uh, the the position is derived from this equation once again by treating the position as an endogenous variable okay is this clear we have decided so there is no circularity because whatever are the exogenous variables in this model okay for the exit price model they have already been derived from previous calculations the position size which is 5.8 has been derived from a previous calculation so we know the value okay the entry price we know we have determined the entry price the exit price this is exit price minus okay this should be called exit price minus because it's exit price on loss and this exit price we are calling it let's label everything quickly together so that this is exit price plus okay to indicate that this is exit price on profit okay so please remember that exit price plus exit price plus and exit price plus exit price exit price plus and exit price plus okay exit price plus exit price plus okay have i done it correctly because to me uh, it's it's such close range i almost can't make out the difference in entry price and exit price they looking the same to me okay so i think i've done it correctly yes okay because i'm too close to the screen okay so uh, all right so now you have understood this problem everybody yes shivam are you following what has been done okay so this all the ex exogenous variables in this model okay which is position size entry price and profit okay both have been uh, so out of this entry price was just arbitrarily decided because i decided to go long at 9970 because i wanted to go long at market okay so that is kind of arbitrarily given but the other two exogenous variables in this model were determined they themselves were determined by treating them as endogenous variables in a previous uh, exercise right because i had to model the position size the optimal position size as a function of entry and exit with the constraint that the loss must be equal to 42k only so that's how we model this this got this figure and then the other one is the profit figure which we got as 250k because in order to make 113k 113% roic uh, with all these loss restraint uh, constraints okay loss rate and the maximum loss average loss therefore that 113% return can only be produced if we have a 6 times r3 which means the average win has to be 6 times the 42k which is this this is clear so you had two previous exercises where you needed to solve uh, uh, the answers to the to to model the uh, the target take profit targeted take profit on winning trades in dollar terms how much profit should you realize when you exit 
on a winning trade yes how much profit you should realize uh, at least basically which is another way of saying and what instead of saying what price should I exit at how much profit should I accumulate before I exit from a winning trade that's another way of saying it instead of saying at what price you can monitor your m2m profit and you should have a plan in your mind that I will exit only when I get to 250k m2m profit okay so that 250k where does that come from that comes from this earlier exercise okay so you are familiar now with the structure where exogenous variables in a particular model may themselves have been modeled earlier as endogenous variables in a previous model in some other model okay so, so that you have a clear-cut value as exogenous variable in the next model okay now uh, where are we here so we got the exit price now we can test this so Galati this is the answer you got yesterday Sir, actually yesterday you gave us uh, the uh, entry price minus exit price. No, no, because yesterday I made a mistake. No, I, I, when I moved, when I moved this to the left side, I did not move the profit in the denominator. This is what happens when you do equations like this because Sir, you can't make out properly. Huh? Gave us position entry price minus exit price. You didn't give us exit price minus entry price. Yesterday you wrote it in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that because that's why I'd use absolute value. Okay, and then we deleted it. So it makes a because this is how it should be written. If you write your equations like this, you will find for the long position. I think even for shorts, it will be the case. If you take a short position, okay, then your exit price. This is for the previous case where you're having a, 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 a even if you have a loss, let's say. So if you have a short position, your exit price will be higher. So in the case of the short position, you have to write it. You have to write the position with a minus. This formula will work even for shorts. Okay, this is when you are calculating profit and loss, not for this calculation. Okay, let me just give you this calculation and input once again. Okay, let's do it this way. This is a separate problem. This is a separate problem. Okay. Okay, this is only for I'm not writing that okay where the uh, the um, terms currency this is modeling trade pre NL okay we we'll call this scenario one which is scenario one is where the uh, the PNL is being generated in a currency which is different from the currency in which your maximum risk and figures are calculated okay uh, so terms currency is different from but and there's the, uh, another element of this so basically this is let's say let's say let's say uh, scenario one is example okay we'll just do it as an example it's easier for then i don't have to write that much that much risk cap okay in usd risk capital figures are in usd okay and trading in usd chf okay so the properties of this scenario is basically here your risk cap means your maximum dollar loss figure all that is coming out in usd those boundaries that you have to stay within those are in usd okay risk cap figures are in usd but you are trading in dollar swiss so therefore the dollar swiss the swiss the pnl will come out in swiss francs you will have to divide it by the exit price whether profit or loss to arrive at the dollar loss of the trade this is clear yes okay now there could be another type of scenario which i told you which is we are not going to write that here where your trade the risk cap is in dollars okay let's write other scenarios we are <laughs> eventually we end up right but anyway good let's since you guys are still uh, not clear about a lot of other things okay let's uh, let's write this now what we have is um scenario two okay in all scenarios we take risk cap in us dollars then you can change it later on and now you're trading in um, okay this is a situation where scenario two where the uh, the pnl currency there is no adjustment required here here your pnl is basically directly entry minus exit absolute value of entry and as exit into the position size now we are going to eliminate the absolute value by writing the expression in a particular way which is what gulati noticed uh, that there's a slight change in today's writing okay um, now are you following so far if you're not following please interrupt yes someone you're following okay 
don't switch off and go into your whatsapp stay focused okay everybody at the back is following okay if you don't follow any step please ask if you don't ask i can't it's not possible for me to watch everybody's expression and figure out that you have not understood okay so please interrupt and ask a question okay so we are now going to try we are going to write an expression a general expression for modeling trade pnl okay there will be yeah okay we'll come to that just remind me after this okay so uh, we'll come to that let me just finish this part now okay so this part everybody has understood how we model the exit price this is just algebra nothing you can just see it yourself and check it this is correct i've cross checked the figures with a numerical example okay everybody has understood here what we were trying to do we were trying to because all this is basically forcing you to think about trade risk and risk man because risk management is everything in trading okay even in risk even in uh, you when you're doing corporate treasury risk management like anjum was saying that i'm not going to go into trading i want to go into corporate but even if you go into a corporate treasury you still have to have the same skill set you need to understand financial markets inside out you need to understand risk because as we will see in ifm there's not a whole lot of difference between uh, managing a uh, the an investment fund and managing risk for a corporate treasury if you are managing risk for air india if oil prices go through air india of course has a big daddy in the government they'll always bail them out but if you are managing risk for indigo and who doesn't have a big daddy then if oil prices go through the roof okay like what we had here right when we saw oil prices you saw the chart of oil prices in 2007 they went to 147.47 okay and many airlines were going bankrupt as the price was rising through 135 140 many small regional airlines were going bankrupt because nobody had budgeted for that kind of high level of the oil price and oil price is about the oil the fuel expenses about 50% of operating expenses for an any airline so those guys were basically just knocked out so even in a corporate world you have to watch out for risk as you can see i gave you examples like even a big company like reliance junior ambani his companies are a mess now basically because he has not been able to manage the risk properly so what does the i mean he started out with all that capital and everything but it, he's made a mess of it so even in every business risk management and eventually it will come down to being able to manage market risk and follow markets so don't think that you are going into corporate finance therefore you don't need to follow markets you need to understand markets and risk all these risk considerations will apply even in a hedging scenario okay where you are hedging risk for a corporate okay because you have a limited amount of risk capital that you can uh, allocate to that activity okay so everybody has understood this part okay where we are modeling the exit price on a profitable position as a function of these other variables because we want to basically and so the the two parts going back to what should be highlighted the two parts to your trading success essentially is you must develop over time it will not happen overnight okay so just like some of you did not clear the interviews doesn't matter second try third try you will get through so everything does, it doesn't happen overnight so it evolving evolving a good trading system will take time trial and error trial and error over time it will get better okay that's one part of the equation and the second part of the equation is the sheer unpredictability and the luck and to protect yourself against bad luck you need to have really good risk management and all this structured approach to position taking and uh, trade risk uh, management is basically that, that's basically the core that is what will uh, protect you if you have a structured approach you are much better wicket than having a arbitrary approach okay so this makes at least make sure that your system is internally consistent the way you are trading that way you have a defense okay all right so this is the first part now we are modeling the trade pnl what are we doing here we are just trying to figure out how much how to calculate the trade pnl for each trade okay so we have three kinds of scenarios we can look at one is the first scenario where i'm just explaining this verbally because it'll take too long to write where the risk capital currency i'm just loosely using that expression where the currency in which your risk capital and maximum risk numbers are denominated dollars is in dollars okay in all scenarios we take that case and the trading is the the trading in dollar swiss which means your pnl is happening in the terms currency always okay so here the pnl is actually happening in the terms currency which is different from the uh, risk capital currency okay first scenario but the risk capital currency is part of that market which means here this this dollar swiss the other asset in this market is dollars which is your risk capital currency so in this case you will be using that exit price kind of formula which we will write down okay let's understand the scenarios first 
The second type of scenario is you are trading in Aussie US or euros or cable. Okay, cable is everybody understands GBP USD. Okay, so uh, so you are trading in euro, US, euro dollar FX or Aussie or Kiwi or uh, cable. Okay, where the profit is, where the terms currency is US dollars. So slightly different scenario because the uh, PNL is directly being generated in the currency which is the same as your risk capital currency. So one term will drop out. The exit price factor will drop out. Okay, because the PNL is directly coming in US dollars. The third scenario is that is risk cap in USD trading in let's say let's keep it simple Aussie yen. Okay, very volatile currency pair Aussie yen. Okay, now you have a slightly different kind of situation. Okay, so you have a risk capital currency which is different, and then you are trading in a market. Where the PNL currency is, is is different from the risk capital currency. Not only that, but scenario. Sorry, this is scenario three. Scenario three differs from scenario one in that the risk capital currency does not even figure in that market. Here you had dollars in the dollar Swiss, but here in the Aussie end there is no dollar. So here you will have to adjust by. The goal is always the same. The goal is to always convert where it is necessary to convert the profit or loss, which is always generated in the terms currency, in the terms asset. Okay, the goal is always to convert the profit or loss to the currency in which your risk capital is denominated. Are you following the logic? The goal is always the same. Now you can have three kinds of situations. In this case, in scenario two, such a conversion is not necessary. You observe that such a conversion is not necessary because the dollar is the firm's currency, so the PNL is directly coming out in dollars, so I don't have to make any further adjustments. Okay, but the goal should be the the basic logic should the algorithm should be there to check whether there is a conversion required. Okay, to convert the PNL into the uh, into the risk capital currency, and these two uh, you can understand the difference between scenario one and scenario three. Okay, all right. Okay, now what we do is so we'll just write out let's say modeling trade PNL in this has already been done before I think I think it's already in your notes so I didn't want to spend more time in this on this but let's do it this way okay I'm not going to write plus or minus because I think we'll treat it as the same. I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. Okay, is this clear? This this expression is clear to everybody. The dollar Swiss PNL is going to be position into position, which may be position is to be written for. We'll write one more rule here. short position you write enter it as a minus sign so the first scenario is modeling trade pnl in dollar swiss risk capital in dollars okay so trade pnl is equal to so we will always write as pnl equal to position okay let's test the long position first long position okay position we write it with a plus sign basically with no sign Position into exit price minus entry price divided by exit price. Okay, why do we write it like this? That's Gulati correctly noticed. There's a slight change in style from yesterday. Long position. Okay, in the long position, when you are took this is at a loss. Uh, uh, when when it is at a loss and when it is at a profit, it will come out. Let's take the loss situation first. Let's consider the loss situation. You have gone long dollar Swiss and you have uh, in a loss. The ex this is exit price is at a loss. So in this case, which will be this this figure is going to be negative or positive? Negative. This expression in brackets. It's a negative. Negative because exit price will be lower than entry price when you are locking at exit exit price at a loss. Okay. So then your PNL will come out as negative. Okay. And we are dividing it by the exit price. Why? Because the PNL. If you leave out this last term, if you leave out this term, okay, 
then you are talking about this is only this this part is only going to give you a Swiss franc figure dollar amount into Swiss franc entry price uh, into dollar Swiss entry price by dollar Swiss uh, minus dollar Swiss exit price will give you a Swiss franc figure okay that we don't want we want a dollar figure okay so we have to therefore divide this whole expression by the exit price of Swiss franc not the entry price why exit price because that is where the dollar Swiss is at the time you exit the trade imagine if this is your last trade then this will be you will be you revaluing everything back into dollars because you're actually a dollar based investor that's why your risk capital numbers are in us dollars it's just clear so you have to ex or uh, divide convert by dividing at the exit price dividing or multiplying whatever you do by the exit price is this clear everyone follows so far this has already been done once before now let's take long position exit at profit okay <laughs> still the same scenario we are looking at the second sub the second sub scenario first sub scenario was long position exit at loss this one works this formula works now let's take long position exit at profit exit at profit position is positive sign now in this case expression in brackets is positive or negative positive positive so net result of all this pnl lhs is positive or negative positive you are exiting at profit so LHS is positive so what we have seen long position both the sub scenarios exit at profit and exit at loss this formula is fine okay you should practice entering all this into your spreadsheet you need to get a you have to develop a feel for all this why do I tell you to keep on bombarding your brain with continuous Bloomberg TV CNBC every night because that is how you develop a feel for things you don't develop a feel just sitting in the class doing whatsapp sometimes chatting that is not intense enough you have to basically go into the system i mean you have to basically immerse your brain in the world of uh, finance right otherwise how are you you're not doing justice to your whole experience right if you're doing something you do it 100 percent okay okay so uh, you have to practice all this now let's go back to see if the formula works for short position both the sub scenarios exit at profit exit at loss okay short position means the position will have a minus sign okay for short trades write the position with a minus sign okay minus x for short position exit at loss okay in short position exit at loss expression in brackets is positive or negative short but okay okay I shouldn't blame you because it's not easy to figure out mentally short position what will I do in a short position I go short dollar Swiss at 99.70 market I put my stop at 1.0034 so what is my expression this is my exit at loss price this is my entry price what is my expression exit price minus entry price <coughs> figure will be positive expression in brackets is positive but position has a minus sign okay so PNL LHS is negative which is what we want it's a loss okay reverse it minus sign on position exit at profit exit at profit okay so expression in brackets will be negative okay because it will lower than the entry price because the profitable trade so expression in brackets is negative but position also has a negative sign so net result if LHS is positive okay so this formula works for long positions and for short positions if you write the short position with a negative sign which is intuitively logical that is how you would do it short position okay it shows you the position size the position uh, the leaning of the position okay so long position uh, entry at exit uh, profit and loss exits short position profit and loss exits do we have any other scenario to uh, do we have any other scenario to cover we have covered everything okay so from this we can model here what are we modeling we are modeling trade PNL but we have only covered one scenario we have only covered one scenario yes what, what is your question uh, the short position portion yeah short position always the position will have a negative sign because we have instructed you to write the position entry this is like software instructions okay some software may automatically enter it some other way but the software is basically telling you the software rule is if you want to enter a short position enter with the minus sign okay you have sold five million dollars you write minus five million so this will have a negative sign okay now let's look at two scenarios why is this formula correct writing it this way you don't need the absolute value figure okay uh, that absolute value operator okay 
so minus sign on the short position first scenario is exit at loss when you are exiting at loss the exit price because i go short here at 99.70 i put a stop at 1.034 okay so my uh, so the exit price on loss for a short position is higher than the entry price okay clear so if the exit price is higher then the expression in brackets will be positive yes but the position will have a negative sign okay so the net result on the lhs will be negative okay pnl negative which is what we want because we are modeling a loss scenario we expect it to be negative okay this is sign neutral okay this is always positive okay so now this is this clear this part first first sub scenario this is long a uh, short position first sub scenario which is uh, the actually sub sub scenario because this is a scenario then you have a sub scenarios two sub scenarios long and short and then within each of the two sub scenarios long and short you have a sub sub scenarios with everything is included sub right okay so that <laughs> only Piyush got the joke or some other people also got it okay <laughs> but you preferred not to laugh okay which is true which is which is anyway it's not uh, okay so let's get back to business we have no time left okay position uh, short position second sub 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 scenario of the second uh, of the short position okay second sub sub scenario which is short position exit at profit okay when you are short, going short at 99.70 and exiting at 98 booking a profit okay in this case the exit price is lower than the entry price less than the entry price clear magnitude wise it's less than the entry price so then the expression in brackets is going to be negative, negative yes. but it is multiplied with another item which is negative so negative negative positive so the pnl lhs comes out as the positive which is what we expect because it's a profitable trade pnl is positive this is clear okay all right okay so we have covered these cases this is clear now we have to cover the other two scenarios we'll just copy this uh, thing okay let's try um, quickly garvit is already getting restless so we have to hurry up train is approaching the station garvit is getting restless we will cover that means we will not be able to cover option trading material again today but please revise the thing so basically what you have to do is you have to watch the videos again and again because we have already covered it okay i'm not reprimanding you for asking the question but as a technical response to your question what i'm saying is that if you go through the material i have meticulously covered i have given you a very structured approach to solving each of the decision problems that will arise this is clear so it's all been it's all in the videos you have to watch it again and again and read the books read the references that are given okay read some of the other books which are in your finance reference uh, folder option trading book on share by sheldon Nattenberg. but that will not give you much clarity on actually doing the project you better anchor yourself in the uh, the structure that i've given you anchor yourself in that structure it should solve all your problems okay just repeatedly try to understand uh, then if you still have problems we'll again revisit it when i come back okay all right okay so uh, second scenario scenario two what is scenario two okay quickly okay i'm just going to quickly wrap up so garvit please tie him up so that he can't get restless tie him up and uh, keep him still for the rest of the class okay right now what are we going to do now this part is going to drop out is this clear guys in the case of aussie us because the pnl is coming out in the same currency in which our risk capital is denominated so that ex exit price division business that we had that we can eliminate now and we should eliminate because then you will have a wrong answer because the pnl no adjustment is required because pnl is already coming out in terms currency in the terms currency which is dollars which is the same as your risk capital currency this is clear yes so we you're on board and the expression we are not going to retest all the scenarios and the sub scenarios because we know it works okay it will not affect whether it's a aussie dollar trade or a this is working because in that particular scenario the exit price minus entry price this expression is written in such a way that for long and short and that will not change the fact that the in a in a short trade losing scenario the fact that exit price is higher than entry price 
that is not going to change from dollar swiss to aussie dollar this is clear this is clear to everybody that will not change because you can just pull up an aussie dollar chart here and see it will not change it's the same concept because in fact should not even need that because you'll see that it, it does not change even in the aussie dollar if i'm going short at 67.70 and putting a stop at 69 the exit price on a losing trade ex exit price is higher than the entry price okay so the same dynamic will apply okay so everybody knows that there, we don't have to do anything here this part of the formula doesn't need to change this division the divisor drops out because pnl is coming out directly in the terms currency and then what else is here okay third one in uh, this is not actually this is the third one is different i have to copy that okay scenario three what is scenario three aussie yen scenario three is aussie yen in this case we have a further adjustment here what will happen is this we can't just use the exit price because the exit price is a aussie yen rate when you're trading Aussie yen, the exit price of the Aussie yen rate, dividing a yen PNL by the Aussie yen rate will not give me a dollar figure. Is everyone clear about this? If I divide a, the PNL and Aussie yen trading will be generated in yen. So if I divide a Aussie yen figure by a Aussie yen, the yen figure by a Aussie yen exchange rate, it will give me an Aussie figure, not a dollar figure. Right? Okay. So therefore here, what I have to use is um we have to use basically long expression between now this exchange rate between uh, terms currency and <coughs> risk cap here what is the exchange rate we have to use here where my risk cap currency is US dollars and I'm trading in Aussie yen so for the divisor this whole expression is for the divisor okay this is all long English yeah long English la uh, uh, language here used but this is actually meant to tell you what should be the divisor okay so can you tell me in this situation where the uh, risk cap currency is US dollars and I'm trading in Aussie yen so what should be my divisor what exchange rate which exchange rate dollar yen should be your exchange rate because what is happening what is the what is your objective this part on the RHS the numerator of the RHS is giving you a yen figure <coughs> you're not happy with that because you want to compare the PNL on the LHS to a dollar constraint that you have in terms of maximum risk per trade so your goal is to convert the RHS expression here which is coming out in yen because in Aussie yen Aussie amount of position and this will be a yen PNL you want to convert that yen PNL into dollars right if you want to convert yen into dollars you will have to divide by the dollar yen rate not the Aussie yen rate right and you have to divide by the dollar yen rate now let's think about situations where okay you're a little bit over time but it's fine this is this is it basically yes. so you should practice now programming all this into your spread otherwise it will not go into your brain yes sir and this kind of dynamic if you go through these exercises it trains you not just for this specific exercise you understand you should understand this value also that these exercises are not in, not much training you for the specific problems it is also training you to solve other problems which are similar in the future because you are getting to know how these problems can be solved are you following so please do these exercises on your own otherwise it will not be internalized okay okay you can release you have been <laughs> we had tied up Garvit. you can release him okay so you are you, are, you had a question which we are not able to answer that was uh, the calculation of R uh, rc uh, ranging to 113 percent yeah but so let's uh, do that now no sir uh, actually i also have one more question regarding that uh, scenario so now you are at least you're finding interest in the course yeah. the ipm you were sleeping sir in the first scenario uh, where we were calculating uh, regarding the short position 
Yeah. And uh, where, where you said that uh, if you are, like we are entering the market at uh, 997 and exiting at 1.003, so it will be a loss uh, case. Well, let's go back to Dollar Swiss. Give him the mic. Who has the mic? Because there's a lot of noise. Okay. Dollar Swiss. Yeah, use it. Use it. You feel like a singer. <laughs> okay. I, I I understood your question. I'm fine. Okay. Next question. You can use the mic. So we are looking at Dollar Swiss losing trade. Okay. Losing trade uh, on a short position. Okay. So you have gone short. So you write the position as a negative figure. You go short at 99.70 and you put a stop at 10035. Let's say 10030. Okay. So what we notice is that the exit price is higher than the entry price numerically. Numerically, the exit price is higher than the new uh, entry. Ex uh, the exit price is higher than the entry price. So we remember the standard expression exit minus entry. Yes. So if the exit price is higher, that means the exit minus entry expression will be positive. Okay. And so we go back here. Exit minus this part of the expression will be positive. Yes, sir. But the position has a minus sign. Negative sign. That is why. So then the LHS comes out as negative. So it's a loss. Right? It's a loss, which is what we expect. What we are testing is whether this formula works if we write it this way. This is more elegant than writing using ABS. Because we can use one type of expression for all cases. Right? And it's simpler because the ABS operator has gone out. So this is a more efficient formula. Right? So 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 is this clear now? The solution is clear. Okay. Now regarding your, can we go to your pro other problem? Okay. No, RC no. RC is given. See, uh, R, okay. You don't want this one. This absolute. Those laws which we calculated that our investor we can uh, assume to that our investor can have this much amount of loss. Of no, 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 no. This loss is coming from a different calculation. Remember what we said? Basically, G8 by G60. This has to be slightly different actually what is g8 g8 is because uh, g8 is the total amount of risk capital which is equal to 100 percent of the invested capital g8 by g16 maximum run of losers from the start is 120 uh, but these actually have changed this is actually um, this is a different this this is a separate input it's an independent input into this okay but actually what would happen is you have a hundred uh, trades of losing trades is 135 so this should be rewritten as I'm not going to write it now because it will confuse you guys maybe what we can do is we can set up a separate sheet okay, like duplicate okay. we set up a separate uh, uh, <laughs> we'll call it trade risk trial. Okay, if we write trade risk trial and then we go here. Okay, so you are talking about how to arrive at the maximum dollar risk figure. Yes, sir. So that we have already done in previous videos. You so can we, check we, it. But uh, right now, I'm getting a bit confused that uh, we have 20. 25% as a uh, percentage winner and we have RC of around 113 percent. So no, no, no. RC is not. This is not RC. This is actually return on capital. Let me write it here. Now is better. Okay. This is not RC because that RC was meant to be. Uh, this is true. That RC is actually meant to qualify this column G. <laughs> but I had not planned to write anything in column F, but now I have started writing in column F. So this RC was meant for this. So actually, this column F should go to the left of RC. Then it will make sense. Okay. But this is what it is. So this 113% is not the RC. 113% is what the investor has told you that I want this return. Okay. So let's assume that this 41667 is derived in the way which we discussed earlier, which is you have to uh, tally up your losing trades. What is the projected losing trades total number? 
then in this case is 135 then you do plus one because you should have capital left for one more trade okay so 135 plus one you use that divisor 135 plus one to divide your total risk capital five million you divide five million by 135 plus one in this case the answer is not 41.6 this has come out for a different figure for a different set of calculations but let's assume that by doing that process you came out with 40, 42k okay so now are you fall have you got the satisfactory answer yes. to this that investor tells you i need buddy i need 30 113 percent return if, I want, if you want to manage my money so that tells you that with the 5 million invested capital if you want 113 percent return then it's around 5.625 total profit you have to make okay so if you want to make 5.625 return that means essentially and another way to express the total gross profit is system edge into total number of trades okay system edge into total number of trades now you already know your total number of trades so that means your system edge has to be this 31.25 your system edge has to be this okay so in that case if your system edge has to be this and your loss rate is this 75 percent and your average loss is 42k then 75 also tells you that your win rate is 25 percent so then what is the average win that you need to produce now you have got one equation in one unknown because you have system edge on the lhs and on the rhs you have average loss into percentage loss both those are known plus you have average win into percentage win only average win is not known so this is a one equation one unknown from here you can figure out the average win and you do that calculation and you figure out that the average win is quarter million dollars that tells you that the rc is six uh, not c rc r3 Re -re reward to risk ratio is six which means the average win has to be six times the average loss that, that is the only way with this kind of loss rate and average loss that you can produce 5.625 to satisfy total profit of 5.625 to satisfy the investors demand of 30 percent return right so now can we have a just as an editable one so that we can copy it somewhere and practice on the same sheet no i think you can down no you can practice no you, i don't want you to edit i don't want you to copy it i want you to write it yourself the whole that yeah of course no uh, shortcuts you have to write it yourself that's why i'm not letting you copy anything okay you must write it you look at it as a reference that cross check your numbers but uh, you have to write it yourself you have to create the spreadsheet yourself okay okay welcome okay uh, one minute uh,